All right, <clears throat> so we're going to do a chest um, next. And basically what a chest is is nothing more than a, a box. So we're just going to put our box up like so. And um, I don't think I want a chest this big compared to the dresser. So we're going to just scale this stuff down a little bit. So we've got a chest like so. Um, I don't need as many oh, boxes here. Um, and then pretty much all we're going to do convert it to an edible poly. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to go into the polygon level, select the top, and we will inset it. And something like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it downward. Now, we'll just uh, zoom into this here and pretty much select this and just move it down and move it accordingly. So there's our toy box, okay? Now it doesn't doesn't seem like much now, but then what we can do if we want a lid is we will go off the edit poly, so or go back onto the edit poly, and we're gonna mirror it into the Z axis. We're gonna do a copy here. Uh let's see here. And we're gonna offset it like so. So we're just going to get as close as possible, say OK. And then we're going to go into that edit poly. And we're just going to move this down so that the top isn't as big as the, the bottom. And then uh, before we open it, what we're going to do is we are actually going to zoom over here. And I'm going to put hinges on this side. So. A real simple, fast way to do a hinge is to um, create a tube. Okay, and let's uh, zoom over here. Um, let's actually zoom up into this one here. And if you want to construct an actual hinge and make it actually look, um, you know, the way it should be looking, then what you want to do is you want to construct a uh, tube like so okay and then like this now not as big as this of course um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom in like so um, and pick about how wide you want it pick about the radius you want to go with something along the lines of so and um, let's zoom up in there so we can see what it looks like so with this hinge what I'm gonna do is pretty much something along the lines like so I think that'll be good um, and I don't need to do 18 I'll probably do let's do like 12 yeah let's do something like 12 here Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into an edible, I'm sorry, 10. We're going to convert this into an edible poly, um, like so. And then this is kind of the weird part. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the vertices, or the, the edges, on this side here. and basically extrude those outward and we're actually gonna I'm gonna just save some time and I'm gonna grab the ones on the bottom side here here too so we're just gonna extrude those outward okay and not that much but you know, something like something like uh, that that looks good okay then what we're gonna do is we are let's zoom up in here I'm gonna isolate control uh, or alt Q uh, nope, alt so I'm just gonna isolate this here and then what we're gonna do is and this is kind of weird but we're gonna make it work here so what we're gonna do is we're going to actually select this hinge here, this hinge, 
we're going to go to the bottom here and hold in control, select the bottom parts right there, and Alt and deselect the top parts. So we basically selected those parts here. And um, what we're going to do is we are going to detach that. All right, and then we're going to say OK. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this top part here and go into Edit with Poly. Now let's grab these top pieces here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to move them straight over like so, so that they line up pretty close to your top like this. And then let's just move these downward. So that's like so. And then I'm going to get off of this, select this one, go into the polygon mode here, select these five faces or and move them back over like so. And let's select these like so and we're just going to move those up. Alright, so then what we're going to do is we are going to um, basically this is our hinge. Now what we're going to do is we are going to hit Effect Pivot, and the pivot right now on this one is centered, which is good, and the pivot on this one up here is centered as well. So now, if you rotate these, and we're going to rotate according to, let's see, our view. Here we go. See, now you've got your hinge. Now, do we necessarily need, so basically, now that we've got this, we can actually rotate this and everything's all, all good and set to go. Um, then if you want, you know, some simple rivets, uh, let's add a, uh, we can do a uh, sphere and let's exit the isolation real quick, make it make life a little simpler here. Um, And there we go. Scale that down a little bit. And uh, let's move that over where we can actually see stuff. And um, now we can take this. Let's lower the segments down a little bit here. And let's chop it. Uh, let's go from squash and oops let's see if we can do chop I think chops the other direction nope just the way we created it okay so basically what we can do is squash this like so and let's just uh, rotate this and we'll angle snap with a hotkey and just rotate this around like so. That's at 180 degrees. And basically, let's just move this here. Let's zoom up in there so we can see it. Um, just basically put it onto this part right there, like so. So now we've got rivets. And uh, again, if you want to array it, um, you know, something like this, I would just do, you know, something simple here, grab this one, move that down here, um, say OK, and then make sure that they're attached to that piece, and then just simply go attach, and uh, like so, and actually before we I'm going to just line these up a little bit. Nice thing with the grids is you can line up. So hit attach. There we go. And then hit attach. And, 
oops, and hit attach on this one, and we just attach these two. So that gives you that. If you want, you can put a, a rivet pin in there, um, but that's essentially, you know, what you need to do for your your box. Now, of course, the box needs to be moved like so, right up against, tight up against there. Um, and then let's do another one. And let's uh, move this down like so. We're just going to do a copy. Um, we can measure it if you want. Otherwise, I'm just going to eyeball it here. And then now what we should be able to do is take and put the bottom box here and we can link it we can link these two here and we can link that to the bottom box we can select these two up here and link them to the top box and then the nice cool thing about that is we will link this one let's see are we no, nope, we don't have that selected. So we select this one and link it to the bottom box here. Oops, undo. I, you saw the, the wall, wall flash, so let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can link it in like this. No, nope, it's not doing it. So if you can't get it that way, let's do it over here. Um, again, we should label everything, but so what we want to do is link this box to this box or I'm sorry or vice versa so basically this is the top and we're just gonna click link and we're gonna link it to this box okay like so and we're gonna call we're gonna grab this one we're gonna call this toy box all right and then the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the hierarchy effects pivot and let's go in here and move the pivot right up here, like so. Um, and then with that done that way, if we just rotate this box, click rotate. Oops, a little bit off here. So let's uh, grab this pivot again and uh, move it just over like so. That's pretty close. So now let's rotate this box. So if we rotate this box, you have a working hinge set. And you can kind of place it against the wall and do what you want with it. All right. And so that's pretty much. And again, the nice thing is if you want to move it, you can just move and place it up against so. So that's really the toy box in general. Um, you know, the you, you always want to set things up to be the simplest possible. Now, did I have to do the, the detail of the hinges? No, I could have probably got away with this, but it depends on how hyper-realistic you go. You know, for a game model, this is fine. For a, you know, motion picture, no. You got to do the extra work on it. But there you go. So there's that.